Hello everyone, my name is Neil Jackson and this is Lab 5 titled Magnetic Breaking with Faraday for Physics 2. So the purpose of this lab is to use and study Faraday's law to see if we can make a magnet's acceleration when dropped slower than the acceleration due to gravity. And we're of course using Faraday's law to do this. We're also using Newton's second law and Lenz's law to help us out. So the principles in this lab are super duper applicable to everyday life. Without knowledge of Faraday's law, then most modern machines want to work. One of these great machines is the ATM. So for the experiment on the right here, I have this video detailing one of my attempts. And so we use this tinfoil tube over a ferrous tube to prevent the magnet from sticking to the tube as ferrous means magnetic. So when we drop the magnet through a conductive tube, this tube of tinfoil, there, um, due to the change of magnetic flux, there's an, an EMF, therefore a current, in the tube of tinfoil. That current, because of Lenz's law and whatnot, then induces a magnetic force opposite that of gravity on the magnet, which in turn slows down the magnet as it travels through the tube. This is kind of the magic of Faraday's law and why it's su super duper special. So once I took all my videos, gathered all my data, and put everything into GlowScript, I came up with this model. So on the left, we have this velocity versus time graph. And as you can see, at very early and very late times, the graph is approximately linear, which is exactly what it should be. As the derivative of a linear graph is constant, derivative of velocities is acceleration. So acceleration is constant at these early and late times when the magnet is not in the tube, which implies gravity is 9.81. However, when the magnet is in the tube, the velocity is constant, meaning that there is zero acceleration and a net force is zero, which implies constant velocity, which is supported by my graph. And then in this little tube diagram right here, you can see that the current modeled in red, we know that that's going in the counterclockwise direction by observing the direction of the negative mag derivative of the flux with respect to time in Lenz's law. And then down here at the bottom, I have my experimental time, which was 1.43 seconds, and my computed time by GlowScript was about 1.624 seconds. Now on to the code of the lab. On the left, I have the first three segments, which was essentially setting up all my functions that determine the magnetic field strength and uh, deflux dt, as well as the initial properties of my magnet. And on the right, I have the other four steps that help us find the current of a singular ring, the, mag the, um, the force that ring is exerting on the magnet, and it allows us to update the magnet's velocity and position as it moves through our tube. For our first what-if question, we are posed with what happens if the resistivity of the tube were to essentially go to zero. So we know that the current through the tube, which is what's essentially driving the force on the magnet, is equal to our EMF over the resistance. And so by taking the limit of our current as the resistivity approaches zero, you can see that that limit is going to evaluate to infinity, which in the real world is just going to be a really, really, really big number, which essentially increases the force on the magnet, meaning it's going to spend a longer time in the tube. And then if we were to cut holes into our tube, that's essentially ruining or um, killing parts of the current in that section, meaning the current is going to be less overall, which has the effect of decreasing the force on the magnet, meaning that the magnet will um, fall through the tube faster. And finally, we have our results and error. So I said that my average time in the tube was about 1.43 seconds. The computational model was about 1.624. And then both of these were about double the time it took gravity to bring the magnet down, which I calculated to be about 0.759 seconds. And so this difference between the 1.43 and 1.624 could arise between some human error in calculating DT as you know, scrubbing through phone footage is not exactly scientific. But the other more probable source of error is that we d simply didn't factor in air resistance into the GlowScript model. Thank you very much for watching. Have a good day.